And another sign that the Department of Justice is getting serious, they have obtained a search warrant for the phone of John Eastman, the conservative lawyer who was behind the pressure campaign against former Vice President Mike Pence. Of course, uh, several weeks ago, uh, federal investigators stopped Eastman and searched him at the time. They obtained his cell phone at that time. This is now them asking a judge if they can search the phone showing Wolf that they're very interested in the role that Eastman played in the effort to overturn the election results. Yeah, that's potentially Wolf. a very significant development as well. Ryan, stay with us. I want to bring in CNN's chief legal analyst, Jeffrey Tubin, and CNN's senior legal analyst, Laura Coates, right now. Jeffrey, this warrant for John Eastman's phone, cooperation from key Trump White House insiders, what does it say to you that uh, we're getting all of these new details right now about this federal criminal investigation? Well, th this is really a dramatic change from what we knew for sure just, just a few days ago. I mean, there had been hints that this investigation has been going on for months, but now we know for certain. And this is a very different investigation than the one that brought hundreds of people uh, to be prosecuted for the actual invasion of the Capitol. These are crimes, if they are crimes, that took place in the White House, in the Oval Office. These are investigations of the president and the people immediately around him. That's clearly now uh, going on. Whether there will be crimes disclosed, whether there will be indictments, that's a very separate question. But there can't be indictments without an investigation, and we know now there is an investigation. There certainly is. You know, Laura, according to both The Washington Post and The New York Times, Federal prosecutors are asking specific questions about former President Trump himself. How significant is that? It's very significant. Normally, we're talking about asking questions not as part of a, let me get the lay of the land, but the specificity, to me, describes that they have already had information from other sources. Maybe they're trying to compare and contrast, fill in some particular holes. Remember, just a few weeks ago, you had the DOJ and the committee engaged in sort of a letter campaign against one another, not trying to be, you know, um, antagonistic, but the idea of the DOJ wanting the information that the committee had, wanting to have what other transcripts they may have had. Why? We now know it's likely because they were trying to essentially decide whether the people they have either already interviewed or intend to do so will have credibility issues, whether it's consistent in some way. You want to dot those I's and cross those T's along the way. But to have the specific questions now of the former president of the United States and asking these questions says they're much farther along in trying to substantiate and corroborate as opposed to just get the foundational information. It's not the beginning of the investigation, in other words. We're very far along. You know, Jeffrey, how much of an uphill battle would the Justice Department face if it were to decide to formally, officially indict the former President Trump? Oh, there, it would be a very complex prosecution. One issue that I think is, is off the table is uh, the one of, can you indict a sitting president? That is a Justice Department policy going back to the Nixon years, which says you can't indict a sitting president. Donald Trump is no longer a sitting president, so I think that issue uh, is, is not going to be a hindrance to the Justice Department. But there are very complex constitutional issues here. What was free speech on the part of Donald Trump as opposed to a conspiracy to engage in illegal activity? Um, you know, what, John Eastman was providing legal advice. How much legal advice is within the ambit of just uh, taking a shot? and how much is actually encouraging someone to violate the law. Those are very hard questions that need to be resolved, but the way you resolve those questions is by collecting evidence, and that's what they're doing, and that once they've connect, collected enough evidence, they'll decide if there's a prosecutable case here. Let me follow up with Laura. Uh, Laura, as this investigation clearly inches closer and closer to the former president, would Trump be mistaken to think another presidential run could uh, offer him at least some protection from legal consequences. Yes, he would be mistaken. Remember, the, the sort of unspoken rule and one that's part of the Justice Department is to not put their thumbs on the scale of an actual upcoming election, not wanting to somehow influence voters by having the notion that one is guilty by virtue of being in the court of public opinion and having that presumption of innocence not mean a lot to voters. But remember, as much as Donald Trump may be casting a shadow and be very influential prospectively on how voters are looking at the midterms, he's not actually on the ballot. So the idea that you have once been a president and might once run again as president 
you would not have the immunizing factor indefinitely to say, hey, as long as you have the prospect of running, you can never be held to account. That would be a grave error and one that I hope his lawyers are not instructing him on. Right. And, and just, yeah, just go to ahead, add Jeffrey. one point there, um, Merrick Garland was asked that very question uh, by Lester Holt mm -hmm. in his NBC interview yesterday, and Garland could not have been clearer that um, the, the fact that someone might be running for president is not something that gets him immunity from being prosecuted. So I think that right. that issue really is off the table. Yeah, no one is above the law. That's what he has said before. That's the gist of what, what's going on right now. You know, Ryan, I know you're doing a lot of reporting up there on the Hill. How are the Justice Department and the House Select Committee navigating these overlapping investigations? It's really obviously a very sensitive issue. It is, Wolf, but it does seem as though the committee and the Department of Justice have kind of uh, put aside their differences and are now much more cooperative than they were in the past. Committee members say that they're open to helping the Department of Justice in any level that they can. They're still being very proprietary over the information that they've already uncovered, but they're coming up with a system to allow the Department of Justice to have access to that. We don't know at what level the Department of Justice has obtained that information, but they're no longer adversaries as they appeared to be just a couple of months ago. All right, uh, interesting. Ryan Nobles, Jeffrey Tubin, Laura Coates, guys, thank you very, very much.